by or far away. Now, all because you can only be with us virtually doesn't mean that you cannot actively participate with us. You can pray for the Lord to bless the services that are about ready to begin. Would you do that right now? There are people here on the grounds of gospel light and many watching abroad who need to hear the Word of God. And some who have gathered need encouragement, some counsel, others the gospel for salvation. But in truth, we all need the Lord, don't we? Well, the good news is He wants to speak to our hearts right now at this moment. So help us pray for that very thing to happen both here and there where you are. So once again, we want to welcome you to Gospel Light Baptist Church. Let's go into the sanctuary now together that we may worship the Lord. to welcome each one of you to our Sunday evening service here at Gospel Light. Let's all stand together, if you will. Grab, grab a songbook, turn to page number 251. Page 251, we'll sing all four verses of He Lifted Me. In loving kindness, Jesus came, my soul in mercy to reclaim. And from the depths of sin and shame, through grace He lifted me. From sinking sand He lifted me. With tender hand He lifted me. From shades of night to plains of light. Oh, praise His name. He Before I heard, before my sinful heart was stirred, but when I took him at his word, forgive he lifted me. From sinking sand, he lifted me with tender hand, he lifted me from shades of night to plain. pierced with many a thorn his hands by cruel nails were torn when from my guilt and grief forlorn in love he lifted me from sinking sand he lifted me with tender hand he lifted me from shades of night If you're here and you've been lifted up by the hand of Christ, why don't you lift your hands up to him? Say, thank you, Lord. Amen. That's good. Some of you caught on. You'll get it before the service is out. It's good to have some visiting friends with us here. I believe we got a group traveling through that's with us tonight. Where are you all from? Good to have you. Welcome to Gospel Light. So good to have you. We got a special service in store tonight because Brother Frank Shoemate is going to preach. Amen. Amen. So let's pray for him. Be mindful of the Spirit of the Lord as he moves and respond quickly. Let's do that. Let's bow. 
Our Father, thank you so much for our friends being present with us, our visiting friends, our church family. Lord, most of all, thank you for your very real presence. We're grateful for a present Lord who is with us in the midst of life. Lord, we're grateful for who you are and all that you are to us. Tonight, Lord, we set aside this next hour and a half, Lord, for worship to thee. You are our audience tonight. I pray that you be pleased. We invite you now to come into this service. Use this choir to begin to prepare our hearts for the preaching of the Word of God. Bless Brother Nathan Vanderford as he's preaching in Concord tonight. Give him a special touch. We need it as well, and we pray it in the mighty name of Jesus, our wonderful Savior. Amen. You may be seated. Enjoy our good choir.
Well, about three weeks ago, we had a video that was shown in the morning uh, part of our services on the Christmas Joy Bag Project, missions project. We're shooting for 1,500 bags or more with a gospel tract in it to go all around the world to land in the hands of missionaries to hand out. And you did a fantastic job last year. We're going to see the video tonight for our evening crowd. Then Brother Lenny will come up and give us a little bit more information on that. So many children, the most exciting part of the year is when the missionary rolls up into their village with the Christmas joy bags. The smiles are so big and the love of God can be felt everywhere. To think that God could take a little bag of toys and encourage a child in such a way to put a smile on their face at Christmas time, what a blessing. For many years, Direct Line Ministry has been shipping joy bags all around the world and the excitement never runs out. The most important part of the joy bag is the scripture booklet placed in each bag. Each year we receive testimonies of children that come to Christ as a result of reading these scripture booklets along with their parents. We've even had some missionaries tell us that they've gone into brand new places, passed out the joy bags, preached the gospel, and churches were started as a result of this ministry. What makes joy bags so special is the love that is put into each bag Churches from all across the country donate the supplies and put the items in each bag based on the list on the brochure. After the bags are put together, they are sent to our warehouse. This is where each bag will be checked and prepared for shipping by volunteers. Volunteers from local New Testament churches come and help prepare each joy bag for shipping. They are the key for all of this to work. After being prepared and put in boxes, they are shipped by trucks, containers, and barrels all over the world. Volunteers travel to local New Testament churches and pick up the joy bags to bring them to the warehouse here in Statesboro. The missionaries follow up with the children by visiting them in their homes, huts, or wherever they live to invite them and their families to attend church. What makes it worth all the effort is the amount of children and parents who have been affected by the Christmas joy bags. Just recently, I received an email from a missionary who went into a particular village and preached the gospel. That day, as he distributed the joy bags and preached to the people, 76 parents and children came to know Jesus Christ as their Savior. On behalf of all of us who work and volunteer at Direct Line Ministry, we want to say thank you for being a part of the Christmas joy bags. Thank you for putting a smile on a child's face this Christmas. God bless you. So as Brother Matt said, we did start the project uh, about three weeks ago. Uh, we are pro progressing very well, but we are quite a bit behind. If we're going to hit 1,500 by the end of August, we've got a long ways to go. Uh, so if you plan on making donations, you need to uh, start doing that now. There are donation boxes in the vestibule. The, the, um, the uh, forms are in the vestibule also that tell you what items that we need. If you're going to do a financial contribution, uh, I need those sooner than later because uh, I need to give them place orders uh, for those items. So if you want to see me uh, with a financial contribution, you can use the envelopes in your pews. Just mark joy bag on it. And I've also been told that if you want to give online, there is an option on the online giving for joy bags as well. Uh, but you know, last year we did hit a goal of 
Uh, we had a goal of 1,200. We hit 1,250. And like I said, this year's 1,500. I really think we can hit it. I think we can actually break 1,500. But we need to uh, get started here uh, real quick. Thank you. And um, also, we have an um, activity for our first through sixth grade on July 22nd. We're taking them bowling in Kernersville. Um, it's, a, it's $10 for the bowling, uh, and that includes lunch. So it's, it's hard to find an activity for uh, that age group that, in, that includes uh, lunch as well. So if, uh, we'll meet in front of the teen church at 11 o'clock on that Saturday, and we'll be back around uh, uh, 1.30. Also, Vacation Bible School workers, if you've not turned in your T-shirt and your lanyard, please take it by the church office and please wash the T-shirt first uh, before you bring it back to us. Uh, uh, but, but anyway, if, can, if you can do that for us, we'd appreciate it. Thank you. I was going to come up and joke about that, but I guess it's a real deal. Wash that thing before you bring it back. Amen. We had a good day on buses today, even though we had a deluge this morning and a storm. All of our buses went out safe and came back safe. Praise the Lord for that. And we had two souls saved in junior church. We praise the Lord for that. Had a total, if you'll look at the boards, 330. We had 58 workers total that worked to get those 330 in. We appreciate every one of them. If you'll look over here to the North Division, uh, Brother Joe Banner and his bus had the high, the high mark here for 30 folks brought in the South Division. 34, Brother Vicente and Brother Jairo brought in a good number. And if you'll look over here to your left in the east and west division, we had a tie. We had 16 and 16 there in the North Greensboro and South High Point route. And then over in West Salem B, Brother Noe and Brother Ron Huffman brought in 33. We appreciate all of our workers that bring these in. And we also appreciate our Sunday school teachers, both in A and B. We appreciate people that take the time and serve through the teaching of God's word. Thank you. And your rewards are waiting on you in heaven. Some of them you'll get here too. But we appreciate all of our people that make gospel light go. How many of y'all had a birthday the last two weeks? Last Sunday, we didn't have it because of God and Country Sunday. But if you've had a birthday, would you allow us to celebrate another year of life? Would you stand up? Here's one here. Mrs. Williams, who else? One up there on top. Any others down through here? Coming across, coming across. Right here. Today is your birthday and you're 30. 39. I almost said it. Happy birthday. Give her a hand. Okay. Any others? Right over here. How old are you, son? 10. That's good. And Miss Darlene, happy birthday. Give him a hand. Appreciate that. How many of y'all had a second birth the last two weeks? It marked the time that you received Jesus Christ as your Savior. My goodness, look at them stand up. Paul, Brother Paul, all the way across. Thank you for standing. That's praise to the Lord for saving your soul. Amen. Justin, good to see you. Amen. Brother Justin stood up. I got to spill the beans. Brother Justin has the call of God on his life, and he's going to Ambassador Baptist College this fall, Brother Justin Southern. Pray for him. Would you do it? Pray for him. Now, the biggie. How many of y'all had an anniversary in the last two weeks? Would you stand up? Hold hands while you stand up. Come on, Brother Eric. Grab hold of that bride to look at that. That's good. Let's start over here. How many years? Brother Jones, 57? Happy anniversary. Brother Ron, Sister Kathy? 53. Amen. All right, Eric. Brother Mormon, how many? Woo, he's got them beat, 61. How about the Moody's? 18. 18 years. Praise the Lord. How about the Ida Bayou's? 27? Happy anniversary. All right, all the way back here, Brother Bill. How many? One more time. 45. Praise the Lord. All right, Tom, how many? 45. Wonderful year. That's a good husband right there. Connie, how many? 51. Amen. Good. That's really good. Am I missing anybody? Up yonder. Brother Bill, how many? 33. Amen. Thank you, Brother Bird. Well, that's a blessing. The special music, I'm sorry it's going to be my family, but you're going to have to get by with what you get. We're going to dedicate it to everybody. Let me give you some announcements. If you look this way, we have just a beautiful array of yellow roses here. And they were placed by Brother Don Stanley in memory of his dear wife that's been passed now, Miss Beatrice, for a couple of years. And then we also have some thank you cards I'd like to read to you. 
Dear Gospel Light family, thank you all for your generous outpouring of love toward us during the time of our grief. The prayers, cards, gifts, and the food have been such a blessing. You all are so kind. We are heartbroken, but not in despair. We are grieving, but at the same time, we have a peace. We will see our precious Oliver again someday. Thank God for the hope we have in Jesus. Signed, Nathan, Katie, Diana, Alice, and Claire, the Pegram family, continue to pray for him. And then we have also, dear church family, we want to thank you for the thoughts, prayers, gifts, and food following the birth of our daughter, Lainey. We are blessed to have such a caring, loving church family. And that's signed, Justin, Brandy, Letty, and Lainey Miller. So keep them both in your prayer, would you please? Just a couple of announcements to catch you up before we have another congregational. Tomorrow marks the last week of our summer camp up in Hillsville, Virginia, and it's been super good. And this is the third and final week, and it's juniors tomorrow. So pray for Brother Brian Vanderford as he's going to be preaching in that meeting. Brother Luke also as well. Luke Rogers will be giving the morning messages. Let's pray for a moving of God. The Sword Conference, it's hard to believe, but it's going to be here one week from today. Where in the world is this year going? Now listen, we have a long-standing tradition at Gospel Light of eating soggy tomato sandwiches, as Brother Bobby would say. Each night, the Booster Club is going to be selling soggy tomato sandwiches down there in meals. And if you can help out bringing some maters, would you do that? Brother Ron Huffman's right back here in the center, and then Brother Jimmy Trexler's over here on this side. If you can help out and bring some tomatoes, we would appreciate it a whole lot. But otherwise, please pray for the Sword Conference and attend it if you can. Also, uh, the Compass class is going to be having a bowling night on the 15th from 6 to 8.30. What's the Compass class? They meet right through that door on Sunday mornings at 10, and it's our college and career class in young married couples. In other words, that's the, cup, that's the group that can get, out, can get out and bowl and not be sore in the next morning. So if you're part of that class or you'd like to be part of that class, right now is a good time to get involved. It's going to be a bowling night, the 15th. Six o'clock. If you have any questions, get a hold of Carson Cox, okay? Now, if you'd like to serve God through this ministry of the church and you've not yet plugged in, would you consider doing so through the bus ministry? Uh, we're needing some helpers down there in the preparation of the breakfast that we have every Saturday in the morning. And you're not going to have to cook. You don't have to have any cooking ability. All you need to do is learn how to serve and wash. I think we all can do that. But if you'd like to do that, see Eddie Phelps here tonight before we leave. All right, Brother Mark, I think that's all of our announcements. Why don't you come on up, get us a fellowship song. All right, let's all stand together and turn to page number 55. Page 55. Alas, and did my Savior bleed Shake hands with someone, make them feel welcome this evening.
right, as you're finishing up, we'll start verse number three. Well might the sun in darkness hide and shut his glories in when Christ the mighty maker died for man the creature sin at the cross at the cross where I first saw the light and the burden of my heart rolled away it was there by faith I received my sight and now I am happy all the day but drops of grief can never repay the debt of love I owe dear Lord I give myself away tis all that I can do at the cross at the cross where I first saw the light and the burden of my heart rolled away it was there by faith I received my sight and now I am happy all the day you may be seated all right by way of prayer needs before we have our ushers come please be in mind brother Billy Billy Branson he lost a brother-in-law suddenly William Tilly so pray for brother Billy and then in the hospital, pray for Grady and Claudine Whitehart, Brother Jimmy Rousey, Brother David Fletcher, and then pretense Sean Steelman. Home from the hospital is Brother Bill Stiegel. He's been transferred over to Green Heaven uh, Rehabilitation, got a long road ahead of him. And then call and request Richard Heath, Herman Heiser, Brother Charles Williams, Don Boswick. All of these have health-related issues and then pray for the family of Larry Howell was called in. Pray for Pastor Clarence Sexton, a dear friend of Gospel Light. Tomorrow they're going to be putting him into a, a, one of those chambers that oxygenates and promotes healing. So the docs are saying, we think this will help. So he's going to be having that therapy for the next week. And Temple has asked Gospel Light to pray for Dr. Sexton. So we'll be doing that. And then also pray for Eddie and Darlene Smith. They have a daughter-in-law named Mary having surgery on Tuesday. And then pray for a person by the name of Buffy Morris. Had a heart attack and is currently in ICU. And the parents of this individual go to Freedom Baptist Church, Brother White. So we'll pray for this family. And then I had a note, Lynn Mendenhall's uncle is in High Point Hospital with a heart procedure coming up Tuesday as well. Many needs. And let's remember the folks that are battling cancer and their loved ones, Melanie Sisk, Richard Rising, Price Redmond, Sarah Herbert, Buddy Bowman, Charles Richardson, Robert Brown, Steve Whitehart, Jimmy Rousey, Roger Mackey, Tom Bruner Sr., Clinton Wiles, Stephanie Marsh, Karen England, and Jeremiah Clark. All of these need our prayers. Let's pray for them. Ushers, would you make your way? And as they come and prepare to take up this evening's offering, how many of you would signify a deep need you have in your heart with an uplifted hand? Just lift it to heaven. The one who knows all about it can answer it. Mine's up with yours. We appreciate your prayers. We're going to pray. Then right after that, my family will sing. Then Brother Frank Shoemate will come deliver the message. Let's pray. Our Father, we are eternally grateful for what you've allowed us to experience this day. It's not just another day of life. It's a day of life with thee. Today, a life with our loved ones, with our church. Lord, it's been a day in which we've, we've experienced your presence. And Lord, it's been a sweet day in remembrance of the Lord's table. We've sung the songs of Zion. We've, we've enjoyed time with thee and with your people. I pray that it not stop now. May you go with us into this next segment of the service, especially as Brother Frank preaches, oh Lord. And Father, we're praying for the needs that I have read off this list. And Lord, we're praying for the needs of the hands that was lifted up here Several and individual they are, but you know them all intimately. May you answer them according to your sovereign will. I pray, Father, for this offering. As it's collected, may it be used for the furtherance of the gospel through Gospel Light Baptist Church. Blessed now we pray in the remainder of the service. We ask it in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. tell you about Jesus and just what he's done for me. How he saved a poor lost sinner, now my soul has been set free. He 
has given many blessings, caused my heart to overflow. And I know He watches over me, watches me wherever I go. Let me tell you about Jesus and just what He's done for me. How He saved a poor lost sinner, now my soul has been set free. As I labor in the valley, and my load is so hard to bear, I just lift my eyes to Jesus, and I go to Him in prayer. Let me tell you about Jesus and just what He's done for me. How He saved a poor lost sinner, now my soul has been set free. What a miracle we were given some 2,000 years ago. God the Father sent Him to us all because He loved us so. Let me tell you about Jesus and just what He's done for me. How He saved a poor lost sinner, now my soul has been set free. How He saved a poor lost sinner, now my soul has been set free. That's pretty good, wasn't it? It really was. I just told Matt, that's the new Chuck Wagon gang coming on here. <laughs> Amen. That's really good. How many of you listened to them in times gone by? It's good, wasn't it? You could always tell when they started off strumming on that guitar, right? You always knew it was. But thank God for those songs they sung. Amen. How many of you got your 1611 with you? Let me see that. Open your Bibles, if you would. Uh, to uh, Psalms 139 and maybe Hebrews 4 and just leave your Bible open there. I'm going to leave you a couple more verses and then we'll come back to that. You'll see why here in just a few minutes. But I uh, want to speak to you tonight. You know uh, uh, how God blesses from time to time. We had a good service this morning and uh, Brother Danny and a few others, they got the, that uh, little wheel got to stir the big wheel and they just couldn't take it no longer. And, uh, you know, it's good uh, to have the touch of God and to have that, just the Spirit of God move you from time to time. And, uh, you know, some of the greatest times that, that I have a lot of times is a lot of time by myself. And, uh, or maybe times in, during devotions, you know, you, when you're sitting reading the Word of God. And maybe even when you're riding down the street in, uh, in your car and you're just thinking about God. And you're thinking about the Lord Jesus. You think about how good it is to be saved. And it gives you time for the Spirit of God just to really, uh, you know, to talk to you, speak to your heart. But it's great to have those times. And uh, I'm going to leave something with you here that the Lord left with me here just a few weeks ago. And uh, uh, it, it, I hope it comes out as good as it did when he gave it to me. But uh, to say this, that, that our God is great. Uh, who loves us so. <laughs> now, just I, I want you to keep that in the back of your mind, and you'll understand it in a few minutes when we get into the sermon. But uh, our great God, uh, who loves us so. And uh, all of us, of course, uh, John three sixteen for God so loved. He so loved. And I guess when there was no greater word that you could find to associate with love that God had for us. He said he just so loved. And, and of course, he did that. And uh, Psalms uh, 145 and verse number 3 says, Great is the Lord, and greatly to be praised, and his greatness is unsearchable. And not only that, the greatness of God is indescribable. I don't think that we could find a word tonight to describe the greatness of God. But he tells us that his greatness here is unsearchable. That's the reason that the world at large out here does not know God, because they try to put him under a microscope and they try to figure out every little thing it is to know about God. Well, you're not going to do that. 
You know, this is a walk of faith and knowing him. It's not a walk of sight. And we're not going to understand everything that takes place. But as we walk by faith, we're trusting God because we know that he knows best. He knows the future and he knows the present. He knows the past. He knows it all. But God is so great and he's great for us. Uh, in that Psalm 145, verse number 16, he says this, Thou openest thy hand and satisfy the desire of every living creature. Now, let that just soak in on you for just a minute, if you would. And what he's actually saying is that God is the sustainer of all life, of the life that you and I have. God is the sustainer of that. The beast of the field and the birds of the air and the fish of the sea, hey, our God, our mighty God, sustains their life. And have you ever thought about this, that he is so great that he feeds those he is the one that keeps them alive. You know, there's nobody that's rich enough to do anything like that, but our God is. And I think that it just does us good once in a while to just get a good glimpse of who he is and to keep that in our minds. You know, we're forgetful individuals, and a lot of times, although we know these things, we let them slip our mind about the greatness of God. He's a sustainer of life, but he's also the creator of all things. Now, we're not talking about what man can do. We're talking about what man cannot do, but only God can do. And uh, several weeks in studying in my devotional time uh, in the book of Psalms and especially the book of Proverbs as I was going through it, uh, I began to notice this phrase that I'd seen before, but it really stuck out to me this time where he'd say this, God is my, and it, it, some other things you know, I'll attach to it in just a minute. But I begin to think about that, is that as a child of God, hey, God is my, and then you attach so many, many things to that. And to understand this, that God's love is so deep for us, he so loved us, that there are so many things that God does for us that sometimes maybe we even overlook that. And to start it out with when it says God is, I like that. Because we're walking by faith and we know that God is, he is, and that God is still in control. But I just pinned down some things that uh, uh, I think it, uh, if you can just think about them and let them rest in your mind and I'll attach them to the sermon we're going to have here in just a minute. But it says this, God is a very present help in the time of trouble. God is my shield. He's my glory. He's the lifter up of my head. He's a refuge for the oppressed. He's my confidence. He's my shelter. He's my defender. He's my defense. He's my sustainer. He's my righteousness. He's my God. He's my strong habitation. He's my king. He's my strength. He's my rock. He's my fortress. He's my deliverer. He's my buckler. He's my high tower. He's my light. He's my salvation. He's my redeemer. He's my help. He's my hiding place. And then in Psalms 84, it says this, he's my son. Now that's S-U-N. You say, well, that's unusual, but think about the son and what does it do? Hey, the son provides so much for mankind, but it says God is my son. Hey, God is my shepherd. God is my portion. God is my, my goodness. God is my keeper. And God is my shade. And I like this. He's my heavenly father. Thank God that he is. You know, you read in the New Testament where it says this, is that God, uh, God, we say Abba, Father. And that little word Abba, if I understand it right, is just like that we'd say Papa. And, uh, you know, God is two things to you and I here today is that we reverence him and we have great respect for him. Hey, for who he is and what he does. You know, the Bible tells us to enter into his presence with thanksgiving and praise in Psalm chapter 100. And it ought to be, and I picture this myself is entering into the gate and there's the king of kings as he sits upon his throne. And brother, I praise him. He, and he says, as you do that, you say, my father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. That means praise your name. 
And we enter into his presence like that because he is the God of gods and the king of kings, and he's everything. But at the same time, he's my papa. He's one that we can have intimate relationship with. You know, there's, it's like your daddy. And, uh, you know, we reverence our daddy, do we not? And there's a certain amount of reverential fear that we have for our dad. But at the same time, we can walk up to our dad and say, how you doing? Give me five. I ain't talking about giving God five. I'm talking about our daddy now. Hey, and give me a hug. Hey, have you ever thought about this? Is when you enter into the gates of thanksgiving with God, and you realize his greatness, and then you realize the fact that there is an intimate relationship there, you say, Father, give me a hug. Just give me a hug. Try it sometime. And you say, well, Frank, you're a nut anyway. Well, I probably am. Glad I'm screwed on the right boat. Hey, but you can just about sense the Lord giving you a great big hug. And doing that, you realize, you know, hey, God loves me. And I might not be important to anybody or anything, hey, but I'm important to him. And as we go through this life, you know, there's so many things that we miss when we, re when we don't realize that God is my father and God is in control and he's my keeper, my provider, all of these things. See, we need to keep it in our mind. There's four things I want to leave with you tonight, uh, if I could, uh, that... Uh, that describes, in order, it describes to me about our relationship with God, or God and me being one of His children. Number one, I want to leave with you this thought tonight: is that uh, God knows me. He knows me. In John ten twenty seven, Jesus said this: "My sheep hear my voice, and I know them." Did you know here tonight, God knows who you are? Look over here in Hebrews chapter number four, and I'm going to read you another verse here, but, and I want you to just keep it in mind and turn back to Psalms 139. But in that uh, fourth chapter, look in verse number 13, uh, when he says, Neither is there any creature that is not manifest in his sight, but all things are naked and open unto the eyes of him with whom we have to do. Now watch this. Seeing then that we have a great high priest that has passed into the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast our profession, for we have not an high priest which cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities, but uh, our infirmities, but with an all, but was in all points tempted like as we are, yet without sin. Watch, let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help us uh, in in the time of need. Now back to Psalms chapter one thirty nine, and we know this that. You know, the Lord Jesus knows, actually, he knows us better than we know ourselves. And uh, you notice in that f uh, first verse, I don't know of another chapter that's in the Word of God that shows us the intimacy of God and his children any more than this one chapter here. But notice in verse number one, when David said this, he said, O Lord, uh, thou hast searched me and known me. Now understand this is that God has always known us. Did you know that? You say, well, when did God begin to know me? Look in verse number 13. And David said this, he said, Thou hast possessed my reins, and thou hast covered me in my mother's womb. He says, I, I will praise thee, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made, and that my so soul knoweth right well. Marvelous are thy works, and that my soul knoweth right well. Look in verse number 15. He said, my substance was not hid from thee. You know what he's talking about? He's talking about the seed of the man and the woman as they come together in the womb of the woman. Do you know that life begins at conception? At conception, and God knowed me, and God knowed you from that very point. He knew you. Now, you know, you think about this when I thought about that. He knew me even before I knew myself. He did that. And uh, he knew me in that way. But there come a day when I knew him in a personal way. I knew him in a way of relationship. And did you know that that's what God desires to do with everybody? It's not just to know them, but he wants to know them in a personal way. Well, how does he do that? He does that when we take our place as a guilty sinner 
and realizing that Jesus Christ died on the cross for our sins and that he was buried and rose again the third day and we personally invite him to come in our heart and save us. Now, my friend, when you and I did that, we started a relationship that nothing can ever break. Now, we may break fellowship, but we'll never break that relationship. Amen? And God desires that. Now, there's a big difference now for you and I of knowing about God and knowing him. There's a big difference. You know, I, I tried to go back in my mind's eye, and I think maybe I couldn't have been over five years old. But the first re recollection that I had of, uh, of being in a church, I think it must have been a vacation Bible school somewhere, to hear the name of God back in those days. And as years went on and up through the teen years and even my 20 years, I don't ever remember a time when I didn't believe Jesus Christ died on the cross and rose from the grave. I had it up here. I knew about him. Now, there's a big difference in knowing about the Lord and knowing him, okay? Big difference in that. Hey, but when I come to recognize my sinfulness and invite him to come into my heart, I believed on him and he became my savior at that time. So the Lord knows us. Hey, thank God he does. He's revealed that uh, here in the scriptures. Um, you know, another thing that we realize is this, is that because that we know him, we're under his ever watchful eye. Did you know there's never a time that we're out of his vision? There's never a time. You look, if you would, in verse number uh, uh, 7 in this same chapter right here. And uh, David's talked about a lot of things. I'll leave with you here in a minute. But he says this, Whither shall I go from thy spirit, or whither shall I flee from thy presence? If I ascend up into heaven, you're there. If I make my bed in hell, behold, thou art there. If I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the uttermost parts of the sea, even there shall thy hand lead me and thy right hand shall hold me. And then he goes on to say some other things there. But that ever watchful hand is with his children all the time. He even goes on to say this, even in the darkness, he said, the dark and the light is both, are, both alike to you. And you know, there's sometimes... If there's anything that can bring fear sometime in a man's heart is by being in the dark. Nobody likes the dark but the devil, amen? We, <laughs> he does. I don't like it. But for, even in the dark times that we have in our life, hey, we understand that there's that all watchful eye that's over us. That's almighty God. Hey, and he's our shield and he's our protector and he's our provider during those times. And God says, I want you to know, hey, that you're special. I want you to know that I can do all things. And then he goes on to say this in that, that 139th Psalm. I want you to notice. He says in verse number two, watch what he does know about us. He said, thou knowest my down sitting and mine uprising. And I like this verse when he said, thou understandest my thought afar off. I'll get back to that in a few minutes. But he said, thou compass my path and my lying down and art acquainted with all my ways. Hey, can you believe that God knows our ways? And sometimes we try to hide them. He knows all about them anyway. Amen. Hey, he says, I'm acquainted with your ways, Frank. I know about that. And then he says this, for there is not a word in my tongue, but lo, O Lord, thou knowest it altogether. And the next verse, when he said, thou hast beset me behind and before, and hast laid thy hand upon me. That little word beset means to surround or to hem in. Let me tell you something. When we get into the family of God, hey, we're totally protected all the time, not just part of the time. Behind and before, the hand is laid upon you. I read that uh, one day in a little dumb me. I didn't know what that word beset meant. And I looked it up and found out it meant to surround or to hem in. You know, if you ever heard anybody say, you know, the devil knows the scripture too, and he'll misquote it to you. Hey, this thought came to my mind, said, oh, yeah, he's got you behind and before, but how about on, uh, and on top, but how about on the bottom? How about that? Psalms 37, 37 says this, the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord, and though he fall, he shall not be utterly cast down, for the Lord upholdeth him with his hand. Now, you know what we call that? That's called eternal security. That's exactly what that's called. I'm talking about a great God that loves his children hey, in every situation that they're in. He still loves us. Do you know there's nothing we could do to keep God from loving us? Nothing we could do. And there's no need that we have that God cannot meet that need. 
Hey, we need to understand that too. I want you to look at this next verse when he said in verse number six. He says, such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is high. He says, I cannot attain unto it. Now, what he's saying is with this natural mind that I got, I can't, I can't grasp everything that God does for me. And neither can you. I can't grasp it myself. But I do know this, that it's the, realizing the very presence of God with us all the time can certainly give us peace in our heart. You know, my mind goes back to a man in the scriptures that we often refer to uh, that's one of the greatest men in the scriptures, I think, and that was Joseph in the Old Testament. Now, you think about this if you would. I don't know of anybody we could compare Joseph to and the things that he went through. Here's a man that was his own family turned against him. We know all about that, right? And uh, then he was in Potiphar's house. And in Potiphar's house, he was lied on and put in prison. And uh, for nothing that he had done at all, from the age of 17 years old to the age of about 30, uh, he was incarcerated like that. But now through this whole thing, and the reason I bring him out is because we're so familiar with him. Hey, through this whole thing, uh, whole thing, he never denied God. He never got bitter in his heart. All of the things that the natural man would done, he didn't do that. You know why? Because he realized that God was with him. He realized that. You'll read that uh, in Psalms, uh, I mean, in Genesis 39, a uh, twice to where he said that they even recognized that God was with him. Now, you know the situation about Potiphar's wife and all that she was trying to do and so forth, and he refused to do it. But if you notice that here's what Joseph said. He said, how can, how can I sin against God? Hey, because he realized God was with him. Through everything he went through, God was right there. And, uh, you know, that's the thing that can take us through hey, the hard times in life and the good times in life and everything else is to realize that our Heavenly Father is right there. Hey, we realize that he knows us. You know, he sees everything there is to see about us. He does, and he loves us in spite of anything that we might say or do. And that's the reason that his hand of forgiveness, he can be stretched out to us all the time, not just part of the time. You know, you think about this. Joseph knew uh, all about uh, God being with him while, while he was in prison. And uh, he was even forsaken while he was in prison, but he didn't get bitter about that. Hey, then, uh, you know, you understand this, that Joseph now, you know, men, you were looking from the front to the back, but he didn't know that. When he went in Potiphar's house, he didn't know where he was going to end up at. The only thing that he did know is he had a heavenly father that loved him and cared for him and would provide for him on anything that he needed. Now, we need to see the same thing in our life. You know, there's a lot of times that dark times may come that we can't see the light. But we need to understand that there's one that walks with us at all time. Hey, the Lord Jesus is that friend that sticks closer than a brother. Hey, he's the one that gives us light during the dark times. Hey, he's the one. He's the provider for all things for us. Hey, and then you think about this is that uh, uh, when his brothers showed up, and you know, the natural man would have said, buddy, you got time now, sock it to him, Right? Hey, but he didn't do that. You know why? Because he knew that God had been with him through the whole thing and that God was the one that had led him to the place where he was at then. Now, <clears throat> the little things Brother Matt was talking about, hey, forgiveness this morning. And uh, I brought a great message, by the way, about that. Hey, but here's the thing. Hey, Joseph left all, all the vengeance up to God. No, no, whereas we many times want to take it on ourselves, Joseph said, oh, no, I'm not going to touch that. I'm not going to. I'm going to leave that up to God. You know why? He recognized that God knows me. He recognized that God is with me. He recognized that God would never leave him and he would never forsake him. You think about this, if you would, as we go through life. Have you ever thought about the many times that it's a possibility that you could have been faced with death? And you wasn't because you're right here tonight. Have you ever thought about that? Uh, just once in a while, and different things happen to different people, I have to stop and I go back in my life. I'm talking about way back in my life, even before I got saved. 
And I see near death experiences I had. And death was cheated many times in the life of this man right here. There's not but one, one answer for that. And that is that God was with me. Hey, God was with me just as he's been with you. And there was a, there was a time, 16 years old, I turned my daddy's car over and over this way. Got out with a little scratch in my ear. Hey, there was a time, many of y'all remember this, is that many years ago, I was going home from visitation here one night up here at the railroad track, and the train was coming, the bar had come down, and I'd stop, and a drunk come down the highway, they said he's traveling about 60 miles an hour, hit me in the rear, knocked me through the rail with a train coming. <laughs> That's a bad situation. Hey, I had already seen the light from the train, and uh, the only thing that even come to my mind was push the gas. That's the only thing that even came to my mind. And I was laying down like this looking up. And it's a good thing I was driving a Buick. If it hadn't been, they'd probably killed the engine in it. Hey, but I pulled out over the railroad track. I asked the man that was coming over the track this way after it was all over. I said, about how close did that train come from hitting me? He said, about three seconds. He said, how do you explain? Brother Frank, how do you explain that? That's just a coincidence. Uh -uh. That was the hand of God. Hey, in 2015, right up here, not too far from the church, a girl hit me head on up here I, and tore the car up and like to tore me. I never had a lick like that. And it could have very well taken my life. You say, well, that's just, uh uh, that's not just another thing. Hey, that's the hand of God. Hey, that's on you. You look back through your life at so many times. You know, I think about many of our men here uh, that has been in war. Many of them I know that was in Vietnam. And I've uh, heard many of them talk about, oh, I could hear the bullets zinging by my head and all such things as this. I know uh, some of them, uh, they experienced explosions right near them and so forth. And you could be dead, but you're not. You're not dead. You're right here tonight. You know why? Hey, because God had his hand on you. He was right there with you. He knows you. And he looks after you in every place that you go. I'll never leave you and I'll never forsake you. Hey, I'm just saying this, that a lot of times I think if we're not careful is that we forget, uh, that we forget, hey, the greatness of God and the protecting hand that he has on us and what he's doing, on, uh, doing for us. He's our defender. He's our defense. All of these things that are written, and more than that, by the way, that's in the word of God. But that's the things that I need to keep in my mind to see the greatness of God. And I'm one of his children and thank God that I'm special in his eyes. And he is in control of all things so we don't have to worry. You think, well, I don't know what I'm going to do. God's going to show you what you're going to do. He knows exactly where you're at, what you're going through. And he's going to lead you in the dark times. He's going to lead you on the mountaintop. And he's going to be right there with you at all times. So number one, understand this, that God knows you. Hey, not only God knows you, but he leads us in everything that we do. And we're never out of his sight and thank God for it. Well, here's another thing now, is that God understands us. He understands. I like the second verse in that Psalms 139 when he said this, Thou knowest my downsetting and my uprising, and thou understandest my thought afar off. That, that means I understand what you're thinking before you think it. And uh, that's exactly what it means. But, you know, to pull that little word understand, he says, I understand. I, I think he understands more than our thoughts. I think God understands everything there is to know about us. He understands that. Uh, he understands us better than we understand our own self. Have you ever caught yourself that uh, you do something and maybe you fly off to handle about it and you think, why did I do that? Why in the world did I say that? You know, why did I think that? Why? And you don't even understand it yourself. But here's the thing that God understands us. He, and I get this and you'll understand it. He understands us. And if he didn't understand us, there's no way that he could help us. No way. Now, I'm, I don't say that God uh, condones everything that we do. I'm not saying that. And that he puts his approval on it. But he understands why we do what we do. Therefore, when we come to him, he's able to help us, just like he said in Hebrews chapter number 4. That we do not have a great high priest that cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities, but was in all points tempted, such as you and I, yet without sin. 
And listen, therefore, let us come boldly to the throne of grace that we might find grace and mercy to help us in the time of need. You see that? And so God understands why we're doing it. You know, uh, I remember one day I was over at my cousin's house and she had two twin boys. And the boy, I don't know, maybe it's three, four years old, wasn't too old. And they were sitting there and they was playing with something. And one of the boys reached over to the other boys. And I'm, I mean, he just didn't take it out of his hand. I mean, he jerked it out, you know, like that. And I'm sitting there thinking to myself, boy, your mama, why are you out, you know, for like that? And as I looked at her, she said, Frank, don't think nothing about it. He says, that's exactly the way those boys do. He said, they don't think anything about it. That's not a bad thing for them. That's just the way they do it. Now, where I was thinking, mama ought to jerk them up and wear their hide out. You know, hey, mama understood. Mama understood her boys. And she understood that was not a hateful thing. That's just the way that they do things. Well, did you know that it's the same way with you and I? Hey, that God understands when we're faced with something. Hey, even understands a temptation that comes your way that you fall to that temptation. I'm not saying that he approves of it. I'm just saying that he understands why. That's the reason that we can be honest with God about any problem or anything that we have on our hearts. Hey, we can be honest with him. Have you ever thought to yourself sometime, I don't know if I'm going to tell God that or not. You know, now I think this actually happened. It was told it happened anyway. Uh, you know, preachers got a lot of tales, and this was told about a preacher. They said in one of the services in some church, is that there was a fellow that come in that had uh, it was obvious that uh, he had been drinking, and uh, anyway the sermon was preached and uh, the man come out and went down to the altar, and the preacher went down and knelt knelt beside of him. He was going to pray, and and uh, as the preacher was praying, he said, "Lord, now you know this man right here has been drinking," and as the story goes, that he looked at him and said, "Man, don't tell the Lord that." I mean, as though the Lord didn't know it. The Lord knows he's half drunk. I mean, you didn't have to tell him that, you know. But he thought, well, don't reveal things like that. Hey, well, God knows anyway. He knows our thoughts. Hey, he knows everything there is to know about us. He knows our motives. He knows our weaknesses and that all of us has got. Hey, that if he didn't know it and if he wasn't acquainted with it, there'd be no way that he could help us. But I'll say this to you, that there is nothing, hey, that our God cannot help us with. There's nothing that he can't help us with. Hey, God sees the mistakes that we make. He sees the weaknesses we got. He sees the failures that we have. And, you know, special spiritual needs that we have where we fail so much. God knows all about that, you know. But like a loving Heavenly Father that he is, he's standing there saying, I'm waiting for you to call upon me because I got the solution for it and I can help you and I can lift you up and I can give you victory over anything that there is that you have to face in life. You know, many times uh, that, and everybody's not saved out of the same background, I know that. But uh, there's many times in life, a man's, uh, his life before he lived, before he got saved. And there was a lot of things he was acquainted with. It may have been drugs, might have been alcohol, and it, it's a lot of things, immoral acts. It might have been a lot of things. Well, don't you know that the devil is going to take that and he's going to try to beat you to death with it after you get saved? He's going to try to get you to, uh, to get back and get involved in things like that. Well, here, let me just throw this out. You already know this. But the best thing that you can do is stay as far away from it as you can. <laughs> you don't need to see how close that you can get to sin. You need to see how far away you can get from it altogether. Because let me tell you something. In ourselves, we're weak vessels. All of us are. And if we look around and see the sin that is encompassing our world today and how easy that it is to get involved in stuff like that, Listen, we need to see this old flesh right here is weak. Hey, you know, Paul said, I don't have no confidence in the flesh. Hey, that's Paul. I mean, the great man, Paul. Well, I'll tell you one thing, Paul. You ain't the only one that don't have confidence in the flesh. I don't either. Hey, because I know exactly where it leads you and what you'll do. But here's the thing. He'll take that thing that was your weakest point. 
And he'll try to get you involved in it and get you back thinking to yourself, well, you know, and, and uh, I know this, Adam, uh, had a good friend of mine one time that um, he was a member of a certain club uh, that uh, has to do a lot of times with drinking and that sort of thing. And uh, he said, well, Frank, he said, now I've quit drinking and all that, but I go back. And he said, I'll go back. And uh, he says, I can sit and witness to these guys. I said, yeah, first thing you know, you're going to get that whiff of that old liquor again. And you're going to think to yourself, the devil's going to say, well, it ain't going to hurt to take a drink. That's the way it starts, by the way, okay? Ain't going to hurt to take a drink. Next thing you know, you're going to be stone blind, ditch water, and drunk out here somewhere. I said, you better get away from it. Get away from it. Many of us remember a uh, preacher, we won't call his name, is the chaplain of Bourbon Street. Y'all remember him? Many, many years ago and was a powerful preacher. I've heard him preach before. And uh, Bourbon Street in uh, there in Louisiana and I have been there, and I know what the place is. It is nothing but a cesspool. That's all you can make out of it. We had a we had a bus tour one time, and we stayed in the French quarters, and two or three of us walked up there. Just you heard of Bourbon Street to see what it looked like. It didn't take but about two looks to find out. Boy, this ain't no place for us. And uh, first night, second night, by the way, we was up there giving out tracks right at the uh, intersection there. Uh, but anyway, he was the chaplain of Bourbon Street, and. Uh, uh, you go in there, there's a lot of immoral acts that goes on and nudity and just a lot of stuff. And uh, th to say the sad part about it was this, is that because of his association continually with that and because of the weakness of the flesh that he fell, as far as I know, he never got back right with God, it wouldn't made public. Hey, but you can't take it. Hey, hey listen, God understands your weakness you say, I'd be ashamed to tell God that something like that was bothering me. He already knows it's bothering you. But the thing of it is, he's got the strength to help you to overcome anything that you might be facing in life. Hey, he knows us. Hey, hey, we have a father that understands us, everything there is to uh, understand about us. And uh, therefore, because of that, hey, we can come boldly to the throne of grace. Because our father is waiting to hear us. And, uh, and not only that, to help us to meet the need that we, that we have in our life. Then there's another thing. He knows us, and then he understands us, and then this, he cares for us. He cares for us. Hey, the songwriter said, no one ever cares for me, cared for me like Jesus. No one ever did, and no one ever will. Now, as we hear this, and at a, uh, this, our communion service, uh, Brother Matt had a lot of uh, things to say about this particular thing. But he cared so much for us that he was willing to leave the glories and the portals of heaven and to come into the sin-cursed world and make himself subject to those that he had created. You think about this. And you think about, when you think about the sufferings that the Lord Jesus went through, you think about that. Uh, you think about not just, you know, a lot of times... And, uh, you know, people has painted portraits of who that, what they think Jesus looked like. And most of the time it's like this. Uh, you'll see Jesus on the cross, okay? Most of the time he's got long hair, which I think that's wrong to start with. But we won't get into that. We'll get into something else, okay? Hey, but you'll see a crown of thorns on his head with a little blood trickling down. And then uh, you'll see in his side, most of the time, a little blood there. And then, of course, he's nailed to the cross. And that picture is uh, not a drop in the bucket of what he suffered. You know, when the, when the Bible talks about, and I read this a lot of times, and you probably already know this, but I read about the scourging, and I really didn't know what it was talking about. Until one day I began to do a little research. And a scourge, actually, if I understood it right, was an instrument of torture that was devised by the Roman government to bring confessions out of spies. That's what it was for. But it was called an, a cat of nine tails. It had a, a long handle on it. And they had somewhere between nine and 19 long strips of leather. And the end of each one of those pieces of leather, there was a, uh, was a hook or glass or stone. And actually, it's not a whip like you'd see a cowboy, you know, where you'd pop it. 
but it was a, a, a whip that had actually hit a man's body and it would wrap around his body and those pieces of metal and whatever would dig in and they would pull it out and actually rip a man's body apart. Isaiah 52, 14 said his visions was marred beyond that of any, any man. And before he went to the cross, uh, he was beaten beyond recognition of a man. Can you imagine? Can you imagine that? Now, we, we think about the Lord Jesus and what happened. And you say, well, uh, they overcome him. No, they didn't overcome him. He willingly laid his life down. You remember that? They, uh, Peter come out with a sword, you know, and uh, he was going to fight the battle. And he said, put your sword up, put it up. If I wanted to, I could call legions of angels down here and they could fight my battles for me. But no, he willingly laid his life down. He was willingly scourged and beaten and spit upon. You know, you read about that and uh, you read that they mocked him. And uh, now they had scourged him. Now remember that. His body is just flesh and blood. I mean, they're mingled together. And they put a purple robe on him. Purple, the color of kings in that day. And of course, they, uh, they bowed before him and they mocked him. And uh, here's what happened. If you'll notice as you read that, is that purple robe as they went through their mockery. And then it said that they removed that robe from him. Now, have you ever had a cut on your arm or anywhere and uh, you put a Band-Aid on it and let that blood dry real good? And then when you go to get it off, you know, yeah, boy, you just, you know, can you imagine what it must have been like, hey, when they ripped that robe from that beaten, bloody body? Hey, can you just imagine? Hey, well, listen, no one ever cared for me like Jesus. Uh, he, was, he was taking my beating there on that cross. He was taking my beating there on the scourging block. That was for me he died. And I need to understand, I've got a Heavenly Father that knows me. I've got a Heavenly Father that understands me. But I've got one that cares for me, and he's proved it by that which he done. Then the crown of thorns went on his head. Then, uh, then the cross. And uh, I know you've heard this before. It ain't going to hurt you to hear it again. <laughs> you know, somebody said, well, those nails uh, helped Jesus to the cross. No, no. Those nails didn't uh, uh, keep him on the cross. Uh, uh, you say, well, what did? A little four-letter word called L-O-V-E. Yeah. Hey, for who? For me and for you. Hey, Jesus cares Hey, beyond anything that anybody could care. Hey, just for you and I. No one ever cared for me hey, like the Lord Jesus Christ. And then the final thing is this. Not only does he know me, and not only does he understand me, and not only does he care for me, but he can help. Hey, thank God he can help. Hey, there's no problem that God can't help us with. You know, there's a lot of things we pray for, and, and we just have to understand hey, that God answers prayer in his way. Okay, we do. I prayed, as most of you know, my wife's in heaven now. And uh, I prayed. He answered two prayers that I prayed, okay? I said, Lord, first, I want you to help me to live at least long enough to look after her. I want to do it myself. I do. And then the other, I asked him to heal her. Well, he answered both prayers. Now, the first one, I'm still alive, okay? Hey, but the next one, he answered it, but he didn't answer it the way that I'd want him to. I'd, I would have rather for him to heal her and her be sitting here in this service tonight. Hey, but he done something better than that. He set her in the heavenlies. And she's free from that body. She's free from that. And thank God one of these days, somewhere down life's road, hey, by the grace of God, I'm going to be able to see her again. I'm going to. You see, hey, God can help us through anything that we have. Listen to this. In Psalm 62, 8, it says, Trust in Him at all times. You say, Frank, what does that mean? It means that's what it says. <laughs> it means trust in Him when you're on the mountaintop. That means trust in Him when you're in the valley. It means trust in Him when the dark times come and you don't understand what's going on. Hey, trust in Him when everything don't work out exactly the way that you think it ought to. That's what it means. Trust in Him. Watch his, what He says at all times. Ye people, listen to this. 
Pour out your heart before him. That's a good one, isn't it? Hey, God is a refuge for us. Selah. All right, listen to this. In Jeremiah 33, 3, here's one all of us know. He says, call upon me and I will answer thee. And show thee great and mighty things which thou knowest not. Did you realize that God is in the miracle working business? You realize that? And did you realize just a while ago, like I was talking about the different things that's happened in our life, hey, that God saved us from death, nothing short of a miracle. Hey, and he's still in the miracle working business. And we've seen it happen. Hey, we've seen people that had sicknesses and so forth that they said it's just no hope. But there is hope because we got a God that can override sickness and whatever it may be. Therefore, what do we do? We keep saying, God help them. God do this and God do that. Amen. Then you, I was thinking about Genesis 18. And there was a time when Sarah and Abraham. Now, we remember the account of that, don't we? And uh, God had promised Abraham that you're going to have a son. You're going to have it. And uh, time is going on now. And uh, he's about 90 years old. Sarah's about 89 at the time this was written right here. And we know that uh, as far as scientifically or whatever you want to call it, 89-year-old women don't have babies. Amen? <laughs> Thank you. I just want to agree with me. It'd be like it. Uh, and this actually happened. I think it was here at uh, Gospel Light. But uh, John Rice used to pray for ladies to have children, pray for them to get impregnated. He used to do that. And, uh, you know, bro Brother John Rice, you know, he'd look over his glasses. He's all right now. That's a, you see, you hear what they say. Well, you ought to understand. You ought to believe it. That's what the Bible said now. I was just thinking, what's he wear glasses for? He don't ever look through this way. He looks through this way. But he had, he had asked ladies. He had asked them, if you're, you know, if you want to... Uh, if you're looking to have a baby, and ask them to stand up. And uh, one night, this this actually happened, uh, is that he was uh, he had said something else besides that. He didn't say that for ladies to stand up, and ladies were standing up all over the auditorium. And he began to pray, and in his prayer, he said, "Now, Lord, all these ladies here now, uh, all of them wants a baby now. Lord, we pray that you'd help them." And one by one, as they're sitting down, all over the <laughs> that actually happened now. Hey, but they come to Sarah, and, and Abraham said, you're going to have a baby, and Sarah laughed. And, and, the, and the Lord said this, is anything too hard for the Lord? Is, I'm asking us here tonight, is anything too hard for the Lord? There's nothing too hard for the Lord. Now you say that, you'll have some wise guy, you'll say, well, can God make a rock so big sometime that he can't move it? I said, no, but ain't wait one so big, you can't move it. Hey, but here, there's nothing too hard for the Lord. There's nothing that he can't do. What is it that you have uh, on your mind, and you just think, you know, I don't know. That's, maybe it's a person that's, that's lost, and it just seemed like it just, I mean, it's no hope. I mean, you witness to them, and others have, and so forth, and, and maybe, it's a, 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 maybe it's a sickness that you're dealing with, a disease, whatever. And it could be a thousand things I could think about, but it just seemed like it's so hard. Well, we got a God that's able. But at the same time, we have to trust in Him and say, Lord, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to trust you to work it out because we know that you're in charge. We know that. So we here tonight, we're some privileged people, folks. We that know the Lord. Here we are. God knows me. Now, hey, the dignitaries around probably don't know me, but God does. Yeah. Amen. <laughs> That's the one that counts. That's yeah. that, my papa, my God. And he said, now, Frank, I want you to sit down and talk to me and just tell me what's on your mind. Yeah. yeah. I, that's what I want you to do. Because I want you to know that I understand. I understand why you run your mouth the other day and you shouldn't have. I understand and I know all about it, by the way. I was wondering what you was doing was wrong with you. Hey, I know that, and I care for you, and I'm going to help you. And we, we close by saying this. If you're here tonight and you don't know the Lord, if you don't know him, I didn't say didn't know about him, but if you don't know him, you, you come and trust him. And let me tell you something. It'll be the greatest move that you ever make in your life. It'll be the grandest thing that you, ever, you have ever done. 
and from this point on in your life will be the happiest that it has ever been if you'll make that move. Now let's bow our heads and we're going to have a closing word of prayer here in a minute. And Brother Matt will be coming. Heads are bowed and eyes are closed here tonight. And I pray this, if God has spoken to your heart tonight, and the main thing that I'd say that if he just, if you just got a glimpse of who you are and get a glimpse of just how great a God we serve, but you can just get that. He's your keeper. He's your provider. He's your protector. Oh, I know that we live in dangerous times, but listen, a God is able to look over his children and provide. He's able to do all that. Don't get all upset about situations that's in our world today. Well, they're going to change this. They're going to change this. And the common is taking over and all these things. Well, if it does, God's still in control. But if you're here tonight and you're unsaved, then we want you to come. Here's the invitation is given. Brother David Merle will be standing here in front of the pulpit. If you're here lost tonight, I don't want you to kneel at the altar. I want you to come and take his hand and say, I need to talk to somebody. And then maybe if the Lord has spoken to your heart tonight as a Christian, or whatever it may be, whatever it may be, maybe you just need to come and around the altar and just thank God for who he is, just whatever. But let's stand with our heads bowed and our eyes closed. Dear Father, tonight I just pray that you'd add your blessings to the preaching of the Word of God. And Lord, just help it to be food for us. Lord, we, we just want it to encourage people and help it to be so. Help us to leave here tonight with a new, brand new uh, uh, glimpse of God as He works in our life. And we ask the prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. What's your song, Irma? Uh, 345 in your hymn books, if you would. Help Brother Mark as he leaves. still pray. He cares for me. Amen. Oh, I had one more. He's coming for me. <laughs> Amen. Thank you, Brother Frank. It was a blessing. And it helped our church family here tonight. Appreciate it so much. Don't you stop praying for Brother Frank. He needs your prayers. Be in prayer for us this coming week as we have our junior campers up at Hillsville, Virginia. Let's be in prayer for them. Our day camp that's right over here at Gospel Light Christian School. They need your prayers. And then don't forget to pray for one another. Had a good crowd tonight. Had 588 that came out. So glad you were one of them. And glad the presence of the Lord was felt today. We've had a good day in the house of the Lord. It's been good. God bless you as you go home. Don't forget, Wednesday night, 7 o'clock. God bless you as you go.
Well, we trust that the Lord spoke to your heart through our online services today. If you have trusted the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Savior or made an important spiritual decision, connect with us at glbcs.org. We appreciate you taking the time to tune in today. I am Matthew Morrison, pastor of Gospel Light Baptist Church in Walkertown, North Carolina. Thank you for tuning in, and may God bless you as you go. I'm all the